Welcome to BitMart's live AMA session with DMTR. I'm Jason from BitMart, and we have John Trask, the CEO and founder of Dimitra Technology with us. Thank you for being here. Thanks we're, for having me, Jason. Yeah, we're, we're lucky to have John here today to tell us what real farming is all about. We've introduced several uh, DeFi projects lately, but when we talk about farms today, we're very really referring to actual farms, like with cows on them. Um, and when we're, when we're referring to yields, we're not talking about APYs, we're talking about like extra crops. Um, here's a little screen cap we got from our, uh, your website. We'll have John go through how that works in a bit. Um, Dimitra is a global agriculture technology company that utilizes blockchain, uh, AI, and IoT tech. John is a globally re recognized blockchain expert with a background in enterprise software development and designing complex supply chains for multinational corporations. Uh, John is passionate about using the power of information to deliver agriculture technology to small farm holders who, while playing a vital role in keeping our world fed, often struggle to feed their own families. Uh, the rules for this AMA um, haven't really changed. We do have a few questions that we've gathered beforehand uh, that we'll uh, get John to go through. Um, after we get through these, we'll start taking questions from you guys. Um, five questions will be selected from live AMA participants for John to answer. Uh, after the AMA ends, the video will be posted on BitMart's YouTube, YouTube channel. And if your question was chosen by the host, please comment the same question you asked under the video and you'll get $40 in DMTR each. And 20 lucky users who submit a picture of themselves like this on Twitter next to the live AMA session will be rewarded with $15. And 10 relevant comments will be rewarded with 20 uh, each after the live video has been posted. All right, so John, can you provide us an overview of what Demetra is? Yeah, absolutely, Jason. So Demetra is a, is a software platform that we've built over the last few years, which really is designed around helping farmers increase the output on their farm or reduce their costs, mitigate some risks associated with their farm. The, the world farming market is, is a very large place. Everywhere in, everybody in the world eats uh, 610 million farms in the world. And about 570 million of those farms are actually what we call smallholder farmers. So they're typically less than four hectares. Um, a lot of the product that they grow is for their own consumption, but also those 70% of those farms, 570 million farms produce 70% of the world's food. And those farms are, are underserved in the world. They don't have access to technology in the way that large farms would around the world. So what our goal is at Demetra is how do we put technology in the hand of the smallholder farmer? How do we do that on a, on a cell phone where a farmer can analyze their crops, they can use artificial intelligence, they can use satellite data, and IoT sensors in order to help make better decisions. And what we find is that farmers, when they start using the application, can start seeing increases in their yield. So farmers in typically these areas of the world um, don't produce the high volumes per acre that you might see in, in North America or Western Europe. They have other challenges that they're trying to address in the in their growth cycle. So we're really about how do you help that smallholder farmer increase their output? Mm -hmm. I think uh, the following questions you sort of answered it for a little bit, but can we go a little bit into more details about how this project helps uh, these real world farmers? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, a farmer can log into the platform, um, as they log into the platform, they can set up their farm, put a geofence on their farm. With that geofence, we can take a satellite picture of their farm and start mm -hmm. performing analysis. Um, we can analyze their soil. Right now we're working on one of the largest soil reclamation projects in the world mm -hmm. in India. 
um, the initial phase of this project, we're working with 1.3 million farms. And what we're doing is we're analyzing soil conditions, analyzing soil organic content from space via a satellite. And with that, we can make recommendations for the farmer to change some of the nutrients in the soil, uh, methods to improve their soil. And in doing that, what they, what they can do is they can see increases in output of anywhere from 20% to 100% on the crops that they grow. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of detail in how we do it. And then we start layering in farmer observation. A farmer can go into the system and, and make an observation and tell us about their soil or tell us about their goals and their crops. And we can access best practices to guide them on how to grow more crops. And when we do that, we reward them with points, Demetra tokens. Mm -hmm. And essentially that starts a cycle. That starts a cycle in crypto where they're starting to earn for um, providing information. That information feeds our machine learning. And so as we start learning more about their field, learning more about their crops, learning more about their region, we can start providing insight to more and more farmers. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we go work with nations. We, we don't sell individually to farmers. We go with, work with countries right now. And the countries get us to set up very large numbers of farmers, hundreds of thousands or even millions of farmers in mm -hmm. each application. And each application has a goal. So like I said, India, our goal is soil reclamation. And that'll be like a 10 year project. So every year we're gonna to try to improve soil conditions with those Indian farmers. And as we get through those first 1.3 million farms, um, we'll start adding more and more farms in, in India. We've got projects right now in um, Africa where we're dealing with millions of farmers. We just did a deal in Brazil where we're working with uh, the very largest fruit producers in Brazil who represent uh, 70 to 80% of the fruit producers in the country. And as we do this, the great thing about machine learning is machine learning continues to grow its knowledge base. It continues to improve its ability to make good recommendations and feed information in the form of recommendations or reports back to the individual farmer. And then that's all supplemented with the, the benefits of blockchain, the incentives that we can create, the smallholder farmer loans, um, mm -hmm. insurance programs for smallholder farms, Mm -hmm. uh, so many driving factors um, that blockchain can, can provide to individual farmers. And as we look at this 570 million farms, we're looking at hoping to have 100 million farms on our platform in five years. Uh -huh. We've got over a million on our platform now. We've got about 18 million signed up and we're growing incredibly quickly. And as we go through this growth curve, you're looking at 500 million farms. The average farm's got five to seven people working mm -hmm. on it. We're talking about a third of the world's population. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, farming, this is always gonna be a demand. Um, and I've been to a lot of conferences. There aren't too many projects in the agriculture space. So what you're doing is very exciting. And I think uh, the projects I've seen, they've, they've had they were struggling with uh, how they could fit a token into their ecosystem. So how does DMTR, the token, play a key role in your platform? You know, we have about 14 ways that we've identified that the, the token plays a role. It, to start, the token plays a role from the perspective of um, the, the farmer rewards program. And how do you incentivize the farmer to provide you with the correct information? And... What that does is that provides information that we can take and we can resell and we can reapply in many, many different areas of the business. 
in order to generate more revenue and generate more revenue into the, the token area. And what we've designed is we've designed the Dimitric ecosystem. And the Dimitric ecosystem is funded by uh, tokens, the Dimitra token. Mm -hmm. So every farmer, as they come onto the platform, starts needing more information. They need IoT sensors. So we have an East African contract, for example. And in this East African contract, at scale, we'll have about 6 million people on 6 million farms on the platform. Each of those 6 million farms has anywhere from a couple to hundreds of cattle and each cow needs an IOT sensor. Every one of those IOT sensors ends up funded by Demetra tokens. So that creates demand for Demetra tokens. So we take a, a five or $10 million contract, which is just software licensing, and we can leverage that into hundreds of millions of dollars worth of sensors that are required in order to extract data in order to improve that yield. And the farmers are motivated to do this and motivated to use their points to get a discount on that sensor or to buy some of those sensors and do that with DMTR because the yield increase that they get is astronomical. In East Africa, a person sells a, an animal into the agricultural chain for $600 to $1,000. If they can export that animal, they can get $2,000 or $3,000 for that same cow. But in order to do that, they need that traceability. They need that IoT data and they need that blockchain record. Because what's happening in the food security world and the food safety world is that as consumers, whether it's vegetables or livestock, governments are placing more requirements on farmers in order to provide good information. And they're doing that for safety reasons. They're doing that for security reasons. Farmers now need to have that life, life cycle record of the crop that they've grown or the livestock and be able to produce that and certify that in order to meet the export requirements. And, you know, there's many, many other ways that this plays into it. But what we're doing is we are creating this cycle and the ecosystem drives the cycle. We have an incubator program we know we can't develop all of the technology we need. So we right now are running a, a contest and we're giving away a hundred thousand dollars or a hundred thousand tokens on the first prize and 10,000 tokens on the next eight prizes in each region, looking for the best ag tech software that we can incorporate into the Demetra platform. So this will generate more and more software providers who will load their software into the platform to deliver to our, our customers. And we've already got some, some great partnerships in that area. For example, Morpheus, uh, we deliver some of the Morpheus network software within our platform uh, with clients around the world. Very cool stuff. Um, I think, again, you've, you've gone ahead of me on this, <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but if we could highlight a little bit, just one of three attractive features and. I'm not even sure if you guys have competitors at this point, but if you have competitors, what sets you guys apart? Um, maybe one of three things uh, you want to highlight. Yeah, so in the blockchain space, there's not too many competitors. Mm -hmm. In the world, there's lots of software out there that focuses on agriculture. Mm -hmm. And they're really focused on those large multinational farms. They're not focused on those 570 million smallholder farms. What sets us a diff a apart from our competitors is we have a very broad base of technology. So first, when we uh, built our technology, we looked at the smallholder farms and we looked at how do they get delivered technology today. And one of the big challenges is that 
a smallholder farm who may only make thousands of dollars a year, not millions of dollars per year, um, can't afford to go buy five or six or seven pieces of software. So we looked at how do we build the platform or become the operating system for um, agriculture, as opposed to trying to just serve a small niche. Um, these farmers need assistance. Their, you know, their revenue is low enough um, that if we can't find a way to put the software in their hands inexpensively or free, they're very unlikely to buy it until they see it working and they see the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. So we've created a method with that where we actually give the software to the farmer for free. And we do that by partnering with governments, NGOs, and uh, not-for-profits in order to help with that. And then technologically, I guess there's a few things that we do very differently. One is, you know, we communicate first through mobile and then we secure that data with blockchain. So we have a number of blockchains within our system. Um, we start with blockchain for identity and we work into other areas of blockchain. And then we start supplementing some of the advanced technologies that are out in the world today, um, like genetics and genetic analysis and testing, um, like IoT devices and sensors. So there's a number of ways we have advantages over our competitors. And, you know, we go out in the world and we talk at some of these conferences and we get to see what other products are out there. We were just at the global um, agriculture blockchain conference and they came out and said, we're the operating system for agriculture, that they've never not seen a platform in the world that offers as much functionality to the farmer as ours does. That's, that's, that's a great tagline, Demetra. OS for agriculture. <laughs> um, I think you covered this again. Um, you were mentioning uh, genetic analytics uh, sometime in the future for your, road, for your roadmap. Are there other items um, that we haven't covered yet? Like what, what does the roadmap uh, look like from here? Yeah, so coming into 2022, um, our uh, System is going to be open to other software developers. We're, we're running that first uh, incubator and we'll start bringing on uh, a number of um, platform users who can offer their software to our clients. Um, we're working on a couple deals right now. One for, uh, it's not necessarily banking the unbanked, but it's along the lines that you see. Um, where we're looking at agricultural loans and how do you provide micro agricultural loans to farmers so that they can um, get a couple bags of seed or, or increase their fertilizer or make some investment on their farm. And then we're also looking at um, very heavily right now, how do you manage crop insurance? Um, there are a number of crop insurance programs in the world but again, they tend to be focused on those mega farms, not on the, the average farm. Mm -hmm. um, so how do, we, how do we deal with that and start partnering with insurance firms, governments, DeFi, and finding ways to insure crops and, uh, and help farmers deal with some of those natural disasters that are happening around the world? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like GMTRI token has its inherent value and it's, it's got its utilities. Um, but what are you guys doing that make sure that it, this, this appreciates and like what makes this, uh, the utility in your token so important? Yeah, I mean, so as we continue to add users, the demand for the token will go up because all of the, the hardware, all of the software, all of the points programs, all of the insurance, all of the, the loans will be running through and managing with Dimitra tokens. 
So as we add hundreds of thousands and millions of users, demand goes up. Demand also goes up in the market on the exchanges. Um, and then we have a number of big, big chunks of Demetra token that are, that are locked and will be locked for many years or not released for many, many years. Mm-hmm. So we're keeping our demand ahead of the, the, the curve of, of release in order to, to work that way. Um, mm-hmm. We also have a staking program and a node program, which are very functional from a node provision perspective in that we have not only blockchain node requirements, but we have edge computing requirements mm-hmm. in our nodes. So we need you know, support from technology providers and, and node investors in order to um, provide services. And I'll give you one example. Um, we're doing this genetic program for cattle and we'll have several million cattle on the system. The genome of a cow is three gigabytes. Oh. And, and so, you know, just in one South American country and, and one African country, we're looking at about 16 million cows at three gigabytes per cow. So our node requirements can be quite high from a storage perspective and, and data processing perspective. And what that does in the end is it does create um, good tokenomics and good demand uh, from a service perspective in a, in a little different way than maybe a traditional node might. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. I mean, I think um, all the, the staking programs <clears throat> and uh, the tokenomics you mentioned kind of tie into my next question. Uh, which is what, what, what's your strategy for building a strong community? And do you agree that uh, the strength of the community will lead your project to grow globally? Yeah, I mean, you know, the interesting thing is crypto is a very community-based um, field mm-hmm. and so is farming. Mm-hmm. And so it's a, it's a unique relationship. And we've been working, you know, with BitMart and and some other exchanges on growing our community. We are uh, continuing to add more people to our Telegram channel and and different channels, Um, Twitter. I think we just crossed 30,000 people on our Telegram channel just in the last uh, week or two. And so community is critical to us. and, And Community one, from an awareness perspective, um, and two, what we're finding is we're getting some great leads from our community. Um, we're also getting some great advice from our community, and you know that benefit is incredible to to a company to have somebody who you know calls us and says, "Hey, you know I." I know somebody in the farming business and I'm a, I'm a Demetra investor and I'd love to make an introduction for you. Um, At the same time, we get a lot of advice on how we can run uh, the Demetra token better and how do we learn from, from the community and what they're looking for and, and how that generates value for the corporation. (laughs) Okay. Um, a quick answer to our some of the questions that we've gotten. Um, if, if your question was whether they have a staking program, they do. So maybe ask something else and we'll, we'll, you'll, you'll have a better chance at getting selected. Um, uh, our next question is, what's the benefit of holding a uh, DMTR long term? Yeah, I mean, so the benefit of holding it is uh, the, one, the growth of the company will translate into growth of the uh, growth and value of the token. Uh, two, you can stake while you're holding, which is, which is incredibly beneficial. Mm-hmm. Uh, three, you can step up into nodes if you're looking to do that. You know, the, 
the, the contract cycle is different in, in these large projects that we're working on. And, and these projects are millions and millions of dollars. Um, so as we go into a contract, these aren't, you know, land the contract and, and all of the revenue is there. There's ongoing revenue for years and years and years. And it takes sometimes a year or two as we're implementing in order to start onboarding all of those farmers that will generate demand. So we look at Demitra as a platform that can generate demand for the token and that demand will grow as, you know, um, over time and it compounds over time on how the demand grows. So we, we don't have that nice flat curve. Mm -hmm. um, we do, we do see the curve uh, accelerating upwards as we add more people to it. So the short-term investor um, probably won't do as well as a long-term investor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, last question before we start taking questions from the audience. Uh, have you listed, other than Bitmart, uh, DMTR is already available on Bitmart. Uh, have you listed DMTR on other centralized or decentralized exchanges, where can we get our hands on uh, your token and you know just latest updates about the project? Yeah, so today we're also listed on KuCoin and Uniswap, and mm -hmm. we're in discussions with uh, a handful more, four or five more uh, fairly major exchanges that you start seeing announcements over the next three or four months on, on those. That's awesome, that's awesome. It's great exposure, okay. Um, we'll start taking questions from our audience. Um, I'm not sure what, what, uh, where they got this research from, but from JSSJ, why don't you have too many partners in Europe? So I guess the question is like, where, where are your current um, partners located and is our European countries like a challenge to, to, for you guys to like sign on? Yeah, so European countries aren't necessarily a challenge. Um, mm -hmm. Our strategy is to deal with smallholder farmers. And, mm -hmm. and so we're already in over 60 countries. Our expansion plan is really focusing on those countries that need access to it, the software more. So mm -hmm. that's less so North America and Europe and, and more Asia, Africa, Middle East and, and South America. So intentionally, our strategy was to grow in those areas first. Um, those countries are areas where the governments are willing to work with companies in order to do national deals mm -hmm. for particular crops or for very large groups of farmers, where in Europe and North America, you need a, a SaaS model where you're selling to in each individual farmer. And the, the cost of acquiring a farmer is high in North America and Europe mm -hmm. um, as an individual customer where the rest of the world, uh, we may have a, a long sales cycle. It may take a mm -hmm. year to do a deal with a, a country. But when we do that deal with the country, we get a million farms or six million farms. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. That's, that's what makes uh, DMTR uh, valuable. <laughs> um, uh, next question from Venda. I think this is more on like a green initiative. Global warming changes the climate uh, negatively. So by connecting uh, with small farmers uh, with your project, um, are there initiatives to, to combat against global warming changes? Yeah, so if we go back to that India project I was talking about, um, we're looking at soil organic content and Soil itself and, and crops help reduce greenhouse gas emissions and improving organic content in soil becomes a carbon sink and reduces um, carbon emissions in the world. The, the other piece that we really focus is on is how do we re make recommendations to a farmer so that everything that they're doing is sustainable? So mm -hmm. is a farmer making the best decision for their crops that year, or are they making the best decision for their farm to operate sustainably? And so our recommendations are based around sustainability. Mm -hmm. and, and 
that in its own helps with global emissions. We also help with challenges like soil degradation, um, freshwater maintenance and, and freshwater use reduction at the same time. So mm -hmm. lots of environmental benefits that come out of uh, using a farming application like this. Mm -hmm. That's great. Green all the way. Um, I even wore my outfit green just to match the, the whole thing today. <laughs> um, uh, next question from Freddie Joseph Baby. Uh, your, it says, your website says, we work with developing countries to deliver our connected farmer platform to farmers for free. Um, how do you plan to reach out to farmers in these developing regions? So I guess like your, your, your uh, outreach strategy. Yeah, so we have uh, sales partners all over the world, uh, over 60 of them and in 61 countries right now. And uh, we tend to partner in each region with people who already work in the agricultural space. So they may be selling to the Ministry of Agriculture. They may be selling to large agricultural companies in each area. Um, and, you know, we have a number of products like the, the Connected Farmer platform. Um, we have some other products and platforms within our suite. We train those people to go and and sell. And then we have seven regional directors who run regions like Africa, Middle East, North Africa, Southeast Asia, um, South Asia. And they go and work with those ministries and work with those not-for-profits and, and those regional sales partners in order to knock on doors and sell and, and uh, bring more farmers onto the platform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, our next question is from Arham Roney. Uh, says coronavirus has slowed down many economies around the world. Has it affected your projects in any way? Yeah, I think it's affected us both positively and negatively. And you know, if I if I talk about the positive first, it's changed the government's attitude around digitization of services. So one of the services we offer to governments is the ability to digitize their agricultural related services. The governments actually sign up on our platform that allows them to interact with the farmers and provide services. So there is an increase now in demand for government digitization of services. Uh, from a negative perspective, certainly in some areas, it slowed down some contract negotiations. You know, we've had a few contracts uh, right March of uh, 2020. We had just signed a contract for uh, providing services to a nation and the government shut down their offices and sent every non-essential non workers home um, and closed all non-essential projects. And and our project got put on hold until September of this year. So we see in, in some areas it slowed some things down, um, mm -hmm. taking up, you know, putting a one year delay into a project. But uh, overall, I think it's created more demand for digitization of services than, than the, the negative aspects of it. Um, this is our last question for our, from our audience. Uh, from H. Stan, uh, let's talk about Demetra Academy. Can you give an overview of what will be taught in this course or program? Yeah, so Demetra Academy, uh, we started up in order to provide information to individuals around how do you use technology in agriculture? So what's the application of blockchain? Uh, what's the application of AI and, and different things. So what we did was we created an eight week course. Uh, it's three hours per week. Um, earlier this year, we ran it. Um, we had a group of, of over 50 um, potential customers, ministries and, and so on. Um, they put um, senior level people into the course and we actually spent three hours each week talking through technology and talking through how it applies to each of their situations. Um, you know, it, it, 
it's a great relationship building opportunity. It's a great community uh, building opportunity. Um, and we just get a wide variety of people. We got, you know, such a variety rate right from, you know, students who maybe are, are studying agriculture or studying blockchain in, in university, um, right through deputy ministers of agriculture for major world nations who, who went through this um, workshop style format, mm -hmm. talking through the application of technology. Uh, we're running another one starting, I think, uh, two weeks from now. And, mm -hmm. and we'll continue running these programs uh, over the years and evolving the program. Mm -hmm. um, it, it supplements our training program. So as we implement in a country, um, mm -hmm. it, it helps us with our training content, um, helps us find trainers, and, and it helps us stay abreast of, of new tech because we invite um, professors from colleges and universities around the world and they come in and actually challenge us and, and uh, bring their research to help uh, advance the technology as well. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, uh, Freddie, you've got some great questions, but we've already selected your question. Just remember to comment your question again after this video is posted. Um, yeah, we, I mean, we've taken five. Uh, one question about, are you working with notable researchers? Uh, John just mentioned that, you know, they get feedback from uh, professors from, from around the world. And if you want more information uh, about their team, they have a long list on their website. Uh, their link will be in the video below, uh, a video description below. Um, yeah, that's a wrap, guys. Uh, thanks for checking out this AMA. And thank you, John, for being here and educating us about agriculture in the blockchain space. Yeah, thanks for having us here, Jason. I really appreciate it and appreciate all the community members who put their questions in and, and look forward to more opportunities in the future to uh, provide feedback through the, you know, through the channels or, or through future events. For sure, for sure. Uh, we want this to be a long-term thing to be on the Vitra. Um, all right. Uh, thanks, guys. That's, that's all for today. Thanks. Take care.